Hello, Bulls and Bears. It is Monday, July 13th, 2020. Welcome to this episode. Thank you for joining me. My name is JJ. Let's get into some news here. Now, we know that banks have been allowed to lend out money that they don't have. It's called fractional reserve banking. Now, a lot of people and even a lot of uh, economists and even YouTubers that uh, follow the economy and talk about the economy, they say, well, the Fed's printing money, the Fed's pumping money into the system, which is true. They're also buying debt. They're buying um, assets. They're buying bonds. They are manipulating the market absolutely. But, but banks, your bank that you go to, your credit union, your Bank of America, your Wells Fargo, your Chase, right? Your bank that you have, many of you have a checking account with. They create money out of nothing. They issue loans. They put money into the economy by issuing loans, by essentially dealing debt. They're debt dealers. They're loaning out money they don't have. They're creating money by lending out money they don't have. When you get a mortgage, uh, try asking your bank for your mortgage in $100 bills. Well, they won't give it to you because it's all going to be done electronically. And you'll be lucky if the bank even has the, the bills in their uh, vaults because of this fractional reserve banking system. So it's not just the central banks. It's the brick-and-mortar banks, the community banks that lend out money they don't have. Well, what happened back in March? Banks now do not have to have any money in reserves. They can loan out unlimited amounts of money. There's no reserve requirement. That's huge. And we've never seen this happen in our lifetimes with the banking system, but it's hardly being reported. So now people are out there asking the question about the Fed repo operations. Why has the Fed stopped the repo injections into the banks? Well, it's simple. The banks no longer need the repo injections because they have a zero reserve requirement so they can now lend out unlimited amounts of money now of course they're still going to have underwriting because they don't want to give out loans that are just going to default in a couple months then they'll have to go through the hassle and the extra expense of let's say repossessing a car and paying people to try to collect these debts so they still don't want deadbeats and they still want the loan to be active and not defaulted on for as long as possible because then they can make even more in interest. You see what I'm getting at here? So let's look at this recent article here. Reuters article, Fed balance sheet below $7 trillion. Repo drops to zero for the first time since September. And a lot of people are scratching their heads saying, wait a minute. I thought the Fed had to constantly pump money into this economy to keep it from imploding. Well, they had to constantly liquefy the banks because the banks were skating too close to that reserve requirement it was actually a fraction it was less than five percent for most banks that means for every five dollars they had in their vaults they could loan out a hundred dollars and now they don't need any money in their vaults they can loan it out so we're gonna see likely even more cash shortages and we've connected the dots here in a few different episodes of about how they would like to the bankers the people at the top um, the monopoly men um, they would like to go all completely digital they need to keep this propped up for a while longer and what are they doing so the banks are completely unleashed people are asking why the repo injections had stopped and here's an excerpt out of this article the fed began intervening in the repo market in mid-september after a shortfall of bank reserves led to a record surge in short-term borrowing costs so the banks had to borrow overnight lending borrowing from each other in order for a particular bank that loaned out too much and, and got too close to their reserve requirement they had to borrow money from other banks that were not that close to their reserve requirement well there were so many banks that were so close to their reserve requirement and going under it that banks didn't want to lend to each other and there you saw the overnight interest rate really spike up I think it was over 10 percent um, I'll continue here it ramped up that support to unprecedented levels in March after concerns over rapidly spreading disrupted financial markets Okay, what this article fails to mention is that the reserve requirement was completely erased. So you see what's happening here. The illness outbreak has given the excuse for unprecedented actions, but 99.9% .9 of the people have no idea what's going on. They have no clue that the banking system is completely insolvent. They're lending out money they don't have, a fractional reserve. They're making people believe that the people, the working class, are the ones that have to pay for uh, infrastructure, schools, uh, road projects. Everybody believes if we stop giving up a portion of our paycheck, 
that all of these things will not be done, people don't realize that this is money created out of nothing. It's absolutely, it blows my mind every day uh, when I think about the understanding that most people have or lack of understanding that most people have. All right, and I'm not even, I wouldn't call myself an expert in, in deeply uh, invested in uh, learning the financial system. This is just things I learned online and just things I learned through the years. Uh, I didn't even go to college for economics. I have a business degree, but what I learned did not teach me anything about what we're talking about here today. And it just blows my mind that people are so divided, so distracted. All right, so let's take a look at the Fed balance sheet. Let's zoom into one year. This is total assets on the Fed balance sheet. We know it did go over $7 trillion up from just over $4 trillion before the repo operations began in the fall of 2019. And now we see it dropping below $7 trillion. Look at that to the far right. $6,920,716,000,000. Right? Now here's where it gets tricky. What is going to happen to the banks? Are the banks going to be able to lend out money that they don't have forever? Or is there going to be a reckoning? Is there going to be a breaking point? Okay. What I think the current administration, they're trying to keep this imploding economy from com com completely falling apart before the end of this year for obvious reasons. Okay. No politician wants to stop the money flow on their watch. You don't get reelected by stopping the money flow, right? Because the money flow, again, loose money, easy money, makes the economy seem like it's great. Then they can go out and brag about the fake unemployment numbers or even the jobs that are created, a lot of the meaningless jobs, jobs that only exist because people have all this money to spend that they normally wouldn't have if the banks actually had to have the money in their reserves, in their vaults that they spent, that they lent. Remember the phrase we use here, it's lending, spending, and pretending. So banks lend out money they don't have, people go out and spend it, that creates jobs, that creates demand for products and services, and then everybody pretends that the economy's great, Right? Politicians get reelected on it, right? But this is all a scam. Do you see what's happening here? So now the Fed is able to decrease their balance sheet. Uh, we also know that the Fed was uh, taken in, so to speak, by the Treasury. So now it's even easier to control the monetary system. Let's go over here to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York website. What do we see? The repo operations. Uh, the last business day was Friday, July 10th before today of course and what do we see here we see zero 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 right you see what's happening here so the repo injections are no longer needed go down to uh, Thursday July 9th zero 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 right banks have been completely completely unleashed and this again is unprecedented we do not know what's gonna happen we've never seen this happen before it could mean that banks are gonna be a little bit less picky on their underwriting or it could be the opposite maybe they will not lend out as easily as one might expect considering they don't have any reserve requirements and maybe they'll even look for a bigger return by taking more money now and going out and gambling essentially it's gambling um, to banks they'll call it investing and it's that type of action that type of no repercussion system that blew up the nearly blew up the financial system in 2008 it did blow up the only thing that kept it alive was a trillion dollar rescue packages out of the central bank so now it's even easier for banks to be reckless uh, but something else happened that a lot of people didn't expect recently and we talked about it here a lot of credit card companies and a lot of them are issued by banks banks of Bank of America Chase they all have credit cards um, they were not offering these balance transfers like they used to offer even though the reserve requirement had been completely taken away and a lot of people were saying hey isn't that just the opposite of what what should happen when the reserve requirement is eliminated should these banks now more easily lend well they're not doing that right they're being more careful with the balance transfers and also people's credit lines a lot of people's uh, credit lines had been lowered so we could be looking at an engineered collapse when the time is right and I want you to be prepared for it and I just want to want you to put all this information connect the dots and you tell me what you think down in the comments please I'd like to hear from you because again I don't have all the answers I do a lot of a digging today I had to do this probably 45 minutes looking up all the information I had today and just try to connect the dots as I see them but I'm just one person and 
Uh, I'd like to hear from you down in the comments. But ultimately, here's what's going to happen. They're going to try to raise our taxes. They're going to try to convince people. They already have convinced people. Basically, um, the United States, most consumers are sheep being led to slaughter. We are under the uh, belief system that we pay our taxes to fund all these operations. Again, the schools, the roads, the infrastructures, the projects, uh, the public employees, the pensions. Uh, we're fed the line, that, oh, it's our tax dollars that fund these things. And it is, but it doesn't have to be. And that's what most people don't understand. It doesn't have to be. This is money created out of nothing. right? So think about it. Banks can lend out endless amounts of money, no fractional reserve requirement, no reserve requirement in their vaults. Money that doesn't exist, it's just digits on a screen, but yet we have to give up a portion of our paycheck uh, to pay for all these things, to pay for all these operations. Right? Ridiculous. It's ridiculous how brainwashed people are, but this is um, the economic system that we're in. It's an illusionary assist it's an illusionary system. It depends on people being distracted, uh, divided, uh, and honestly just being fooled in order for it to continue. But I think people are going to get a massive rude awakening when this collapses, and I think we're very getting very, very close. I'd guess six to twelve months um, after November. What's going to happen? Will they let it fall apart? Who knows how long? We don't have a crystal ball, but we do know that when it happens, there's going to be a lot of danger out there. There's going to be a lot of a pain, and I want you to prepare. But also, could something good evolve out of this? This could be, I've talked about this before, this could be a mass awakening when people realize, hey, we've been fooled for decades with this monetary system. Okay, uh, Will it be reported on what caused this, or will they just blame the illness. You see what I'm getting at? So it could be a just a ever evolving nightmare that never gets better because no one's going to really realize what's happening. It's all going to be blamed on the illness instead of the underlying flawed uh, sham, scam system that it really is. You know what I mean? Now, a recent article here, this is out of the wakingtimes.com. Major tax increases are about to slam America as cities and states want you to pay for the illness fallout. And here's Uncle Sam with this handout. He wants you to fund this uh, repair of these cities. And they're going to be raising taxes to pay for all the damage, to pay for all the uh, city and state employees. Uh, the federal government's going to want their income tax to pay for uh, those debt collectors. You know, the ones that come after you if you don't give up a portion of your paycheck. Uh, the ones that work for the government. And let's go over a few different uh, locations here and the pain that's being felt right now. Uh, Kansas estimates an $827 million drop in revenues. Arizona expects revenues to drop by $1.4 billion. California expects revenues to decline by $32 billion. And on and on and on. So the shutdown has really put a lot of states in a severe, severe shortfall and a lot of them have their handout to fix the damage that was done and to fill the economic shortage from the illness shutdown and what's going to happen if they don't get the money from the federal government uh, that's created out of nothing right so absolute insanity everybody thank you for watching the support I know I rambled a bit in this video but thank you for bearing with me to this point uh, ride the bull prepare for the bear when I say prepare for the bear I mean get ready uh, for a worst case scenario, maybe we won't see mass starvation and uh, banks going dark and, uh, and failures. And I hope that doesn't happen. I hope I'm wrong here, but I always say prepare for the worst. Right? Prepare for the bear, prepare for the bust, however you want to put it. And what am I doing? Again, I'll wrap it up with this. Um, I've heard a few different channels say it like this, so I'll say it. Um, bet against the debt. All right? When they're pumping endless amounts of money into the system eventually there's going to be an effect right every, right every action has a reaction and you cannot just create money endlessly out of nothing and expect no impacts to be felt I think there are going to be impacts I think one is going to be severe inflation possibly even hyperinflation that's going to send metals skyrocketing I'm mostly accumulating as much silver as I can or two, there's going to be a mass awakening and people are going to finally realize, instead of knowing all about sports and uh, their favorite actors in these movies, 
they're going to find out about the financial system. It's going to become known when people start asking questions. Once people are starving and left homeless on the street, living in a tent or living in their vehicles, then maybe, and maybe this is over optimism, over being over optimistic on my end, maybe they'll wake up and research a little bit and find out what caused this. And if that happens, there's going to be a demand. There's going to be a lot of unrest. There's going to be a lot of uh, revolts. And people are going to want a monetary system that's going to be backed by something. And maybe that's just us because we know about this and we know what the solution would be. The solution would be a strong currency, a strong dollar backed by a commodity. Uh, they, could back it by, they could back it by gold and silver. It doesn't have to be you carrying around gold and silver. But there could be these metals in the vaults and they would not be able to loan out money that's not there in the vaults right it could even still be digital but backed by a hard asset gold and silver so will that happen who knows but I've got a fraction of my savings in the metals just in case because so I think it's a possibility again no one knows hundred percent so we have to uh, diversify and try to prepare for several different outcomes how this could play out Right, and also timing. Maybe we won't see hyperinflation for another five or ten years. Uh, maybe we'll see a collapse in deflation. Maybe the banks will uh, get taken over, get shut down. Who knows what could happen, everybody? But thanks for watching. Everybody, bye for now.